of your life right now. Father, we bless you today, God, and we glorify you, for thou art worthy and thou art holy. You are mighty and mighty to save. You are full of glory, Jesus. So every voice, we sing hallelujah. Somebody sing hallelujah. He won the victory. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. He won it all. Somebody sing that. Say, death could not hold you. How many know that today? That death couldn't hold him. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already. If you're just not coming in, we're starting at 2.55, just giving everybody a chance to get in here. I'm going to start directly at 3 with the preached Word of God. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to say today. Somebody say, death could not hold him. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Love your seed in majesty. Just let his presence fill your house, let it fill your heart, let it fill every aspect, let it fill every space, every empty space, everything that's going on, shut it out right now. Father, I bless you, I glorify you, you're worthy, Jesus. You won, you won, you won, you won. Oh, yeah. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. We're going to give them two more minutes to get in here and then we're going to break the bread of life. Father, I bless your name, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I glorify your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. He's here. Hallelujah. One more minute. One more minute. Lift up your hands wherever you're at and say, Jesus, fill my house. Fill my life. Fill me today, God. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus, I bless your name. Lord, you're worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you. Thank you and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to Time of Transformation. I am your humble host. My name is, uh, you can see it there on my Facebook, my name is Anthony McCool, and I am excited to be in the presence of the Lord this afternoon. I'm excited to be with God's people. Uh, we gave everybody a chance to get in here, but we're going to get straight into the Word of God. Quick, quick, quick announcements. Uh, time of Transformation. This is what this ministry is called, Time of Transformation. It is my in-home live ministry. I just come on here every Sunday at 3 o'clock. I preach, and uh, I'm trying to just get the Word out. Now, if somebody needs the Lord, if you're in the Houston area and you need a home church, we are connected to a home church. I want you to understand that. That we are connected to uh, somebody. We're, we're submitted to a local body that church is called Iglesia Trinidad. It's at 11,602 Bobcat Road right here in the city of Houston, Texas. The services are Friday at 7.30 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7.30, small group groups, and Saturdays at 7.30, uh, Celebrate Recovery with me. And uh, we're doing that every Saturday. That's with me. I'm teaching that class. We just started a new one. But if you need to get in on it, I will make a way. I'll make it happen for you. Because I want everybody that needs to get in on that to be in on it. Um, so uh, that does it for the announcements. Now we get to my favorite part. Let's break the bread of life. How many need a miracle today? How many need the power of the Holy Ghost? They don't want to talk about that too much anymore. But how many need the power of the Holy Ghost to infiltrate every aspect and situation in your life and begin to break things open for you in a way that you never thought that he would or could? I want you to understand today that it does not matter what you think or what your comprehension has told you. God is able to break everything apart with his spirit and his anointing still destroys the yoke. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to begin to turn them with me to the book of Acts, the first chapter. And I'm going to uh, uh, direct your attention to the 6th through the 11th verse. And then right after that, I want you to go with me to Philippians chapter number 1 and verse 6. I see you on there, Aunt Kathy. I love you so much. And one of these days, I'll sing a song for you, I promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 1. Starting at the 6th verse, and then directly after that, we're going to go to Philippians chapter number 1. Thank you, everybody, once again, who is on the live broadcast right now. If you're listening to me, I'm uh, absolutely excited, and I am humbled that you would even take the time out of your busy day to hear what um, this hillbilly boy has to say. But... Uh, Acts chapter number 1, starting with the 6th verse. I just wanted to give you a chance to get there. The Bible said, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now listen. Verse 8. But you shall receive power <laughs> after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. Then the Bible said starting at verse 9. And when he had spoken these things... While they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, 
Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. But I'm going to want you to pay attention. I want you to pay close attention to verse 11 because that's where I'm going to draw my text from. Uh, Philippians chapter number 1 and verse 6 is just going to be a little extra. But I'm going to draw my text out of Acts the first chapter and the 11th verse. Acts chapter number 1 and verse 11. Which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven let's go to Philippians the first chapter and the sixth verse the apostle Paul said this to the church at Philippi being confident of this very thing ha huh, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord. Now let's go back to Acts chapter number 1 and verse 11. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Today I want to preach to you on this topic. Getting past the gaze phase. Getting past the gaze phase. Father, I bless you today and it is indeed right to give you thanks for thou art holy. And what I've come here today to do, God, is only to just join in with what the angels and the cherubims and the seraphims are doing up in heaven as they fly through the air and sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And I come here, Lord, to give you the same worship that the worship I give you would begin to mimic heaven, that you might manifest yourself here on earth. As you did on heaven, as you said in the scripture where you taught us to pray, you said, pray this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we pray that today, Lord, that your will would be done and accomplished today. I ask, Lord, for the anointing because the anointing makes preaching easy and it makes it a sweet delight to hear the word of the Lord. I pray, O oh God, that every person that hears this word would be pricked in their heart, that you would change the heart of sinners, and that you would lift up the church body in its whole and corporately, that they might begin to hear what thus saith the Lord for their life, for their family, for their church, and for every aspect of their life. And now I pray, Lord, that you would begin to move as a secondary consequence of our worship, as a secondary consequence of our praise. We ask, O oh God, that you, first and foremost, that if they don't have the Holy Ghost, Fill them today with the Holy Ghost With the power of the living God And we pray Lord that you would follow your word With signs, wonders and miracles This is the day that the Lord has made And this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel And we believe God that you are pouring out your spirit upon all flesh Do it even now God in their homes as they listen to this word Let a tangible anointing enter into their heart And enter into their home that they might know you and begin to serve you and love you, God, the way that you've ordained for them to serve you and love you. And we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. I feel his presence in this room even now. Getting past the gaze phase. That's what I want to talk about this afternoon. For some time, we have thought of the disciples that... Maybe they weren't ready for the moment that Jesus had been pre preparing them for because when Jesus was taken up that even after he told them multiple times that I'm going to die, I'm going to go to the cross, I'm going to give my life for my church. Even after he told them that, 
maybe it would appear to them that it would appear to us that they were not ready for the moment that Jesus had been preparing them for because uh, as Jesus is going up into the sky they stood gazing after that which he was taking up into heaven I began to think about this very practically that even though we are called to be spiritual beings simply having a fleshly experience unfortunately we are still robed in the flesh so I want you to get this I'm going slow and everybody knows how I preach I'm going to preach I promise but listen for three years the disciples traveled with they ate with and they communed with and spent time with this Jesus. Therefore, they formed a very unique and unbreakable bond with him. Even though he told them multiple times, I believe it was still a great surprise when it all came to fruition. Not because they were ignorant, but because they were in love with him. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Sometimes we get our eyes on Him, not because we're ignorant, but because we love Him. And I think He's looking for a church today that loves Him so much that they will get their eyes on Him. But here they are, they're gazing up at the sky. They just watch their master. They just watch their teacher. They just watched their best friend be taken from them. And even though they had a promise, I am persuaded that they still could not fully understand the promise. And I have been preaching this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I will say it again. Some things cannot be taught to you. Jesus tried to teach the disciples everything that he possibly could. But some things they could not get until they experienced it. Ah, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Good God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. But this one thing I am certain. <laughs> Though they walked with Him in the flesh, they had become fully aware that He was not no ordinary teacher. He was not an ordinary rabbi. And He was not an ordinary man. Though they did not understand the entire embodiment of everything that Jesus was, and still is, they knew that he was the fulfillment of the prophet's uh, promise. The prophet Isaiah prophesied it. Other prophets, uh, prophets prophesied it. They knew that Jesus was the fulfillment of the prophets of old when he said that there would be one that came. They would call him the Messiah and he would save his people from their sins. And one thing I am sure of, that even though they stood gazing up at the sky as Jesus began to go, they were... Uh, captivated because they knew he was the Messiah. Glory to God, I feel him in this place. The gazing was out of love and it was out of admiration that they had for who he was. I believe it was also a captivation with not just him, but it was a captivation with what was that the future held for them without him there bodily? Did you ever think about that? I walked with Jesus for three years. I ate with him. I slept with him. I dined with him. I did everything with him. And then all of a sudden he is gone. So now I've got to figure out what is my life without him here in the flesh? And I believe that they became captivated not just by who he was, but they were captivated by what they were going to do now that Jesus had left them in body. Mm -hmm. After all, these men, I want you to hear this, watch me. We can say whatever we want about the disciples standing up there gazing. But after all, these men did drop their lives. They, le they left their homes. They left their jobs. They dropped everything at the very question that Jesus said, will you follow me? And they said, yes, Lord, I will. 
They dropped their entire lives without hesitation to follow this one. And now he had been taken. So now that we have been captivated by who he is. And now that we have fixed our eyes firmly on him. Let us begin to fulfill the mandate and demand that he has put upon each and every one of our lives. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says it like this. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Then verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 12 said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to hear me today. Getting past the gay space, getting past this space where we are stuck at just looking up into heaven. And now a uh, Jesus that is went up into the heavens and he has left us bodily. Getting past that phase in your life is realizing today that even though he has gone bodily, I can run the race while still having my eyes on him, but not just gazing. I can't be just looking up into the heavens. I can't be just looking up and hoping and waiting just for the day that he returns. But I have to be captivated by who he is, what he said, and the mandate and the, the demand that he put on my life. I have to do it because if I am stuck just looking at him being taken away from me, then I cannot move to my destiny. And somebody needs to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if I keep looking at the sky, I'm never going to make it to Jerusalem. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, God, don't let me get ahead of myself now. Now! Ooh, I feel like preaching today. In the verses preceding our text, the book of Acts opens up like this. Acts chapter number 1, verses 1 to 4. I'm going to give you some Bible today. How many came to hear the word of the Lord, not just somebody talking? He said, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Pay attention. It said, all that he began to do and teach, which means he's not done. Until the day in which he was taken up. We just talked about that. The day that he was taken up. After that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles right. whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself a lot. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. After his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. Speaking of the things pertaining, pay attention to that. He was speaking to the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Listen today, if you get caught gazing because you love Jesus so much, it's okay to look at him. We should look at him, but don't get caught gazing. Because if you're going to get caught gazing, you're going to miss Jerusalem. Ah, yeah. Jerusalem is on the way, baby. Listen to me. Let's address our confirmational text. And reading from Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, which stated that if God has begun a good work in you, oh, he's going to perform it. The first step in getting past the gaze phase is this, realizing that if God has called you, if he has promised you something, or if he's ever spoken a word about your life, you can take it to the bank because he will perform it and he will finish it and he's going to do just what he started to do. I've come to preach to somebody that the devil's told you that God's not going to do what he said he was going to do. That God is not going to finish his promises. That God is not going to accomplish the work that he set forth to accomplish in your life. Listen to this preacher and listen to me now. The devil is a liar. If God ever said it, he's going to do it. If God ever said he wanted something, he's going to accomplish it. If he called you, he's not sorry. If he blessed you, he's not sorry. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. Whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Whoa, I feel revival. 
Hurakaya. Shinderaba Kura Mama Mayata. I got my feeling. Oh God. Mm. Come on, somebody, hear me. I've come to bring a word of encouragement to you. That God is going to finish just what he started. He's not a man that he should lie. Woo, glory. <laughs> oh, glory. He's not a liar. He's going to finish what he started. Woo, glory. You need to look no further than my life. Oh, I was a backslidden preacher. But look what the Lord has done. Look what he's done. He can take anything and do anything. He can change anything. He can bless anything. He can do whatever he wants. He's God. Oh, I feel him in this place. Oh, glory. Glory. Woo. Somebody hear me today. I feel that right there. I feel like I need to just stop for a second. If he's ever made you a promise, don't stand there gazing. Don't stand there waiting on the promise. You can be sure of this. He that has begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it. He's going to perform it. Woo, glory. It is necessary to begin to move beyond where we are or where we have been because Jesus spoke of the things pertaining to the kingdom. Hear me, church. Hear me. It is important to move beyond where we are and it is important to move where beyond where we have been because Jesus spoke of things that pertain to the kingdom. And I have come as an ambassador to proclaim and to just repeat the words of my Lord and Savior. If you've ever read it, I'm going to read it fast. If you need to write it down, you can write it down. I don't have a whole lot of time to let you turn there. But if you want to look at it later, Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 4 and verse 17, He said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I've come to tell a generation. I've come to tell people. I've come to tell a church that it's time for us to go back to an altar of repentance. It's time to go back to holiness. It's time to go back to prayer. It's time to go back to consecration. It's time to go back. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. Listen. It is not by accident or chance occurrence that Jesus told us when he taught us to pray. When he taught us to pray, he taught us to pray in Matthew chapter number 6. Mm -hmm. Watch what Jesus said. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is not an accident that Jesus said for you to pray that the kingdom come to earth. It is not by accident or chance occurrence that he told you and he taught you to pray that way because... We have spent our whole lives. Woo, glory, I feel this. We have spent our whole lives praying for it. But we have been caught just gazing. Because I don't know if we realized it. But he said to pray it. Because he was going to send it. Oh, I've heard somebody tell me today. They said, brother, be careful what you pray for. Because God's going to give it to you. If you've been praying for the kingdom, let me just assure you. That if you've been praying all these years, thy kingdom come. He's going to send the kingdom. Don't be surprised when it comes. Woo! Hallelujah. He sent the kingdom. And I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. He sent the kingdom. And the kingdom is now. You say, why do I need to get past the gaze face? Because the kingdom is not gazing. The kingdom is doing. The kingdom is now. I just saw somebody in the comments. They said it. He is coming for his people. He is coming soon and very soon. He will split the eastern skies. And on the back of a steaming white steed. He's coming home to take his 
church. He's coming here to take his church home. And I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. But if he's going to come, I want to do everything that I can to be ready, to make everybody else ready. I want the kingdom to come to earth. I want it here in my life. <sighs> He sent the kingdom. And the kingdom is now. Hear me? Revival is now. The kingdom is now. Miracles, now. Salvation, now. Holy Ghost, now. Oh God, somebody hear me. He did not call you to sit on a pew and get comfortable and gaze at the preacher and gaze at the prayer and gaze at the praise and worship team. He called you to bring the kingdom to earth and to cast out devils in his name, to pray people through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to shake off generational curses. He called you to get past just gazing and start doing because the kingdom is not coming it is here yeah. Woo! somebody hear me repent for the kingdom of God is at hand kingdom miracles casting out devils it's here it's here it is now and revival is now I want you to hear me today. I'm probably going to make somebody mad with this. Preach. But I'm apostolic Pentecostal. He did not call me to be some dead, dry potato chip on a pew. He called me to violently press his kingdom into the earth. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. I want you to hear this. And I hope that nobody gets upset. But there are many who have made confessions under repentance. And there are many that have been baptized. And I've come to tell you that that is good. Everybody needs to repent and everybody needs to be baptized. We have come, now that we have repented, now that we have been baptized... We have become enamored with Jesus because we believe Amen. there was something that caused you yes. to repent. There was something that caused you to be baptized. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that you believed and you wanted to publicly make it known that you are one with him and he is one <laughs> With you. Mm -hmm. I have become so enamored. With him. We have become so enamored with him. Because we believe. Yes. But I've come to tell you. That the repentance. It was good. The baptism. It was good. But you've been in the gaze phase. And I believe God is now ready. To take his children to the next level. You say what else is there. I've come to tell you today that if you've been, if you've repented and you've been baptized, there's a next level. <laughs> there's another level. Ah, you thought that my repentance and your baptism was good. It gets better. I've come to tell somebody that it gets even better. There were people like this. There were people in the book of Acts chapter number 19 that the apostle Paul encountered. They were believers and the Bible even called them disciples. But they still needed something more. Have you ever just felt like, uh, is this all that there is? Is there something more? There's got to be something more than just this. And I've come to tell you, yes. Assuredly, yes. There is more to God than that which meets the eye. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the great and mighty God. He is 
Oh, the apple of my eye. He's my friend when I'm friendless. He's my hope when I'm hopeless. He's my love when I'm loveless. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. That's what we used to say back in the day. And I'm ready to bring back old time apostolic Pentecostal tongue talking. Oh, aisle running, pew jumping, devil stomping, Holy Ghost. I'm ready to bring it back to the church. We are called to cast out devils in his name, to bring the sick to recovery in his name, to heal those that are sick. He gave you power. And if you have only repented and you've only been baptized, you're on your way. But there's still something more. Acts chapter number 19, starting at verse 1. Hear me. And it came to pass. Now you can't argue with me. You can argue with me, but you can't argue with the Bible. Here's the Bible. Acts chapter number 19. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And he found certain disciples. I want you to pay attention right there. The Bible said they were disciples. Amen. Hear me? They were disciples. They were believers. But I want you to listen to what my man Paul said. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And then he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. <laughs> then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptisms of repentance. Penance. Didn't I just say that? Didn't I say something about uh, you repented and you've been baptized? John buried the baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should yes. come after him. And they said in the text, they said, why stand you here gazing? This same Jesus that is left is coming back in like manner. Oh, and they said that you should believe on him which came after him that he is on Christ Jesus. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. Getting past the gaze phase is moving past the place where he is God with us. And now he wants to be something different because when the prophets of old, the ones that I talked to you about, I talked to you about the prophets of old. When they prophesied the coming of Jesus, one prophet said we will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Oh, but now we've come to this place where we have become so enamored by God with us that we don't realize that there is another step. Oh, you say, what is that step? Well, let me ask you this. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Amen. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because watch, Jesus, when he was there with his disciples, before he was taken up, he told his disciples this. He told them that he said, I have to go away because if I don't go away, the comforter cannot come. I've come to tell you today this. Oh, God, somebody help me. Oh, Holy Ghost, thank you. Somebody hear me today that when Jesus came as a baby, he came as Emmanuel. He came as God with us. He robed himself in the flesh and he came as a man and he came as God with us. But now the Bible said that he told his disciples, if I don't go away, I can't send my spirit back. I can't send you the comforter. So now this is what's happening. Jesus doesn't just want to be God with you, but now God. Jesus wants to be God in you. 
Somebody hear me. He's wanting to get past the gaze phase. He said, if you keep gazing at me, you're going to miss Jerusalem. But go ye and tarry there. Go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Because when the promise comes, I will no longer be God with you, but I will be God in you. what's happened with the church the church is God with us but I hear Jesus saying mm -hmm. I don't want to just walk with you I want to walk in you mm -hmm. is there anybody that's just tired of just walking with Jesus that you want him to walk in you and you in him I don't want to just be here and him there, but I want to get him into my heart. And I know that a prayer of repentance, and I know that that was just repentance. I know that that wasn't good enough to get him into my heart. I need the Holy Ghost. I need this that Paul was talking to the other believers about. I need to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. I still believe in the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. I still believe in the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. And I still believe that every believer needs it. I'm not God and I'm not the church. You say, can people go to heaven without the Holy Ghost? I don't know, I'm not God. You say, can people be saved without the Holy Ghost? I said, I don't know, but I'm not God. But here's what I will tell you. I don't know if people can make it to heaven without Jesus in them. I don't know if people can make it to heaven without the Holy Ghost. But I've come to the realization of my life that I don't want to try to make it without Him in me. I don't want to try to make it without the Holy Ghost. Because listen, we have moved past the phase of just gazing up into heaven and in being enamored with who He is. Now He wants to get on the inside of your heart and He wants to live with you. The old said said, He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me that I am His own. Oh, you know that feeling when He gets down deep in your heart. Amen. Woo! Glory! I feel like preaching old time. <laughs> Holy Ghost preaching today. Mmm! <laughs> Say, Paul told them that they need the Holy Ghost. Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what the Bible said? They said, we didn't know that there was a Holy Ghost. He said, then what were you baptized unto? He said, it's good. We got you gazing. You've been looking at Jesus. You've been looking. Now we want to get you in the game. We want to get you some skin in the game. And the only way that we can do that is now. We've got to get Jesus not just by you, but we got to get Jesus in you. Yes. <sighs> 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 Woo, glory. I still believe in the Holy Ghost. I still believe in the manifestations of the Spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, Amen. the gift of prophecy, the gifts of healing, mm -hmm. casting out devils. Mm -hmm. What did he say in our text? Oh, God. Don't let me get ahead of myself here. I'm already almost done, I promise you. But I want you to hear this. Getting past the gaze phase is no longer just being motivated by who he was. But he is trying to make us militant because of what he said and who he is. <laughs> Here's what's wrong with the church. The church is enamored with who he was. And he's trying to get you focused on who he is. Amen. Woo, glory. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what do you mean by that? I mean that if he opened up blinded eyes back then, he'll do it now. But now that he's not just 
with you. Now he's in you. He said that you. Oh God, I don't want to get a hold of it. Oh God, don't let me get ahead of myself. Holy Ghost, help me preach up in here. Oh, Jesus tells his disciples in our text. In Acts chapter number 1 and verse 8. Here's the first thing. He said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and in Samaria and in the other post, uttermost parts of the earth. So now, now the question becomes, he said he would give us power. But what do I need power to do? What do I need power to do in Judea? What do I need power to do in Samaria? What do I need power to do in all the earth? Jesus answers the what question in John chapter 14 verses 12 when he said this. Watch now. If you don't like me, you can. I hope you like Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Okay, let's stop right there. Not only did he open up blinded eyes, Jesus casted out devils, Jesus made the lame walk and the deaf talk, Jesus did all these things. He said, and if you believe on him, the works that he did, you will also do. But there's a second part of the verse. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these shall you do. Because, watch now, because I go unto my Father. Oh, what do you think Jesus was talking about in the text when he was taken up from them and they were gazing at him? What do you think they were looking at? What do you think he was doing? He was going up to become one so that way he could send his spirit back and that when his spirit came you would have power and then you could do the works that he did and then not just the works that he did but greater works than what he did because he doesn't just want you to be good he wants you to be great he doesn't want you to be caught up in just gazing he wants you to be doing Amen. the work of the king He healed the sick. He healed the lame. He healed the blind. He casted out devils. He did not say maybe one day we could live up to what he did. He said we would do greater. It's time to get past the gay's face. You won't believe me, but I am almost done today. But I've come today. I feel the Holy Ghost. My God. I've come today to break up the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of the enemy that has gotten into the church of the living God and that has caused us to believe that we are here just waiting on his return. I don't know if I should say this. I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers. But I want you to hear this. This Bible is the infallible word of God. But it has to be read with discernment. You say, why is that, Anthony? This is why. It's been translated multiple times. And there are places in it that if you are not sure about what it says or you do not research what it says, you may think that you are disqualified from something because of the wording there. In the book of Corinthians, when the Apostle Paul started to talk about spiritual gifts, I don't have time to go there, and I apologize because this was not in my notes, but I want to share this. 
in the book of Corinthians, when the Apostle Paul started to discuss spiritual gifts, that word gift was inserted into the Bible by King James. So that way that it could be better understood by the people who were reading it. But here's what's happened. We hear the word gift in that phrase and we hear the gift of discernment, the gift of uh, laying on of hands, the gift to cast out devils, the gift to heal the sick, the gift of healing, the gift, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, all the gifts of the Spirit. And we, 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 we call them the gifts of the Spirit. But that was a word that was inserted into the Bible to get people to be able to understand something more clearly. But I want you to understand my new revelation that I've gotten as of late. <sighs> Healing, deliverance, casting out devils, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the prophecy, all of those are not gifts of the Spirit. They are manifestations of the Spirit. <laughs> Watch. They are not gifts of the Spirit. They are manifestations of the Spirit. You say, then what is the gift? The gift is the Holy Ghost. After that you receive the Holy Ghost, you will receive power. Somebody hear me today. Healing is not a gift. Uh, the gifts of the Spirit are not actually gifts. They are actually manifestations of the Spirit. Being able to cast out devils, that's not a gift. It's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Being able to know things and discern things, that's not a gift. That's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The gift is the Holy Ghost. And after that you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power to do all the manifestations of God. You can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out devils. You can do all these things in his name because he called you to do it. That's what's wrong with the church. We have made people to believe that only certain people are gifted. But I want you to hear me today. The gift what did Peter say? In Acts chapter number 2, in verse 38, said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. I just want you to hear me today. The Holy Ghost. That's the gift. That is the necessary requirement. That's the gift. All the other things that we do, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gifts of healing, gifts of discernment, gifts of discerning of spirits, all of those things, those are manifestations of the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have come to equip you today, church, and tell you why are you waiting for a preacher to pray for your sick loved ones? Why are you waiting on a preacher to pray for those that are, uh, have demons in them? Why are you waiting for a preacher to do, uh, to go to those that are in the wheelchairs and tell them, get up from your wheelchair? Why are we waiting on a preacher? If you have the Holy Holy Ghost, you have the power. And if you have the power, say it and it shall be done in the name of Jesus. Woo! Glory. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. For some reason, this church has been inundated with doctrines of devils. The tongue talkers are sent to the back of the church. We no longer heal the sick. We no longer cast out devils. 
We have become a church that is waiting, but we are not doing. I submit that we are not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ when we tell those that are vaxxed with unclean spirits, when we tell people that are sick, when we tell people that are infirmed, oh sister, I'm going to be praying for you. Stop it! When you know somebody's sick, if you know they're vexed with the devil, go over there with your Holy Ghost self, put your hand on their forehead, and cast that sucker out in the name of Jesus. If you know they're sick, lay your holy hands on their body and cast out that sickness. If you know they're hurting, bind up the spirit of infirmity and disease and sickness and loose the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know why God gave everybody that wants the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost if only some of us are allowed to use it. <laughs> Somebody hear me. You do not pray for sickness. You do not pray for disease. You do not pray for infirmity. You do not pray for devils. You cast them out. You don't pray for cancer. You cast it out. You don't pray for sugar diabetes. You cast it out. You don't pray for high uh, blood pressure. You cast it out. You don't pray for these things. You cast it out by the power that is in you. Greater works than these shall. You do. This is what Jesus said about the kingdom. This is what Jesus said to those that he had given gifts in the parable of the pounds. Found in Luke chapter number 19 verses 12 through 13. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Sounds a whole lot like this text. Didn't that sound like the text, baby? He said, why stand you here gazing at the sky? This same Jesus that has went away, he will return in like manner. And the, uh, the nobleman said, he went into the far country to receive for himself a kingdom. And he said, I'm coming and I'm going. I'm going to give my kingdom and I'm going to return. <laughs> And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. Now I want you to pay attention to what the nobleman said. He said, occupy till I come. If it hasn't occurred to you yet in this parable, Jesus is the nobleman. And we are the servants who have been given the pounds. We have been given the gifts. And we are not waiting for him to return. We are to occupy until he to returns. We are to occupy this land until he comes back. You can't be caught gazing at the sky. Because you know that Jesus went up. You have to be enamored with the fact that he went up so he could send his spirit back down. And now he is not just with you, but he is in you. And he's given you the gift. This life for Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm wrapping up with this. This life for Jesus is not a waiting room. It is not a gazing face. It is an operation and an occupation space for the equipped and the militant to exact his nature and his will upon the earth. You say, I don't know why God put me here. He put you here to exact his nature and his will upon the earth. Last but certainly not least, Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 11 and verse 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. It's time to stop gazing and it's time to start taking. It's time to 
to stop. It's time to and start moving into those things that he has said before us. This is how you get past the gaze phase, ladies and gentlemen. The way that you get past the gaze phase is you stop gazing and you start taking. I'm finishing right there. But the whole time I was preaching this message, I heard the Lord keep saying to me, if my people keep looking up, if my people just keep looking up, they're going to miss Jerusalem. He said, tell them, son, stop gazing or you're going to miss Jerusalem. There's something greater. There's something better. There's something even more powerful than what you've seen thus far. And Jesus says it's right on the horizon. Don't be gazing. But we need to get to Jerusalem. We need to get the power. And then we need to get that power, take that power, and use that power to be everything that he called us to be. Let's pray. If you have a need, if you have a need in your body or in your life, you ain't got to wait to get to the church. I love church. I love getting hands laid upon me. I love being slain in the spirit. I love dancing in the Holy Ghost. I love it. I love this way of life. I'm not ashamed of it. Well, I'm a tongue talking Holy Ghost. Holy roller. And it is that that has given me the ability to understand that if I cannot be in the house of God at this moment and I am sick, then I lay hands on myself and I pray the prayer of faith. If there's somebody around me that's sick, I ain't waiting until the preacher gets their hands on them. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith right where I'm at right now. And I'm going to believe by faith that God is answering me. So if you have a need, whatever's going on in your life, I don't know. But all I know is, is that he's given you power over what you're going through. He's given you power over sickness, power over disease, power over infirmity. That's it, Aunt Kathy. Lay your hands on yourself right now. There is a miracle coming right now. I want you to lay your hands on yourself right now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody, I want you to lay your hands on yourself right now. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on yourself right now. And right now we're going to pray. I want you to realize that you don't need the preacher to come to your house. And you don't need to go to the house of God we need to be there we need to go but you don't need it to get what you need because he is a very present help in your time of need sometimes you're not in the house of God but you still need to pray thank God for the Holy Ghost because it makes intercession for us come on somebody if you're there's miracles right now in the name of Jesus I speak healing to my aunt's body in the name of Jesus I bind up sickness I bind up disease I'm not praying for it I cast it out in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We are not maybe, but we are overcomers by His blood and by our testimony. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be power. Let there be glory. Let there be anointing right now in the name of Jesus. And I can't just pray for it. You have to believe it. When I talk about He's doing it right now. There's healing. There's healing. There's healing right now. Open up your mouth and speak the healing. Oh God, we bless you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for my mom and my dad. I pray right now. Father, you know the need. And you know it, God. They might not be in the house of God right now, but they are faithful. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost, let it flow, God, to where they are, God. And let the anointing of the God that lives inside of them begin to stir up and pour out. God, let the healing pour in and pour out. In the name of Jesus. Oh, and I want you to hear this. God is not just giving you miracles for you. Oh, but when he gives you a miracle, you need to understand that the tangible anointing of God makes it magnetic and it makes it contagious. Once he touches your life, it is your job to go out and touch somebody else's life. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. Pray for sickness. If he heals your body, pray that he be Pray that he heals somebody else's body. In the name of Jesus. Woo, 
glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I bind up that sickness in the name of Jesus. By faith I believe that you're doing it. I'm not asking you to do it, Father. I believe that you are doing it. In the name of Jesus. There's healing. There's healing in his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. I will bless the name of the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the name of Jesus. My God, ladies and gentlemen, I felt the Holy Ghost in here today. Woo! I felt healing. I felt anointing. I just believe that somebody's getting a miracle today. Sickness is being healed. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to say it anymore. I'm not afraid to say it anymore because the, the Bible said that death and life are in the power of my tongue. He's given me the power of the Holy Ghost. I speak those things that aren't as though they were. Not because of me, but because He lives in me. Oh God, I bind up sickness and I call it healing. I bind up depression and I call it healing. I bind up spirits that are keeping your people bound. In the name of Jesus, we bind up infirmity. We bind up sickness. We bind up disease. Everything that's not like God. Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. We bind it in the name of Jesus. And we loose the anointing in the name of Jesus. Woo, God. Ladies and gentlemen, I can do this all day, but... I can't hold you. I can't keep you. Oh, God Almighty. There's a mighty anointing. There's a mighty anointing. I don't know what's going to happen this week, but something's going to happen this week. God is going to do things that we did not expect. Look for Him in unexpected places. I feel that in my spirit. Let me prophesy. Look for Him in unexpected places. Look for Him in unexpected people. Look for money sources in unexpected places. Places that you've never thought that He would bless you. Listen, He is doing a new thing. Same God yesterday, today, and forever. But doing a new thing through His people. Hear me today. I feel it in the name of Jesus. There is supernatural provision coming to His people even now. Healing and deliverance going to his people even now. He is doing for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. Come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest, saith the Lord. Woo, glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm leaving you with that. I'm leaving you with that. Look for him in unexpected places this week. You have to believe it. You have to believe this word. Look for him in unexpected places. Places that he wouldn't normal, normally bless you. He is going to bless you in those places. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why and then I'm going to shut it off. I promise. The reason why he is going to bless you in unexpected places is this. Because everybody else around you is aware of how God has blessed you before. And now they've started to think that when you get blessed the way that you used to be blessed, it might have just been you. It might just be because you're smart. It might just be because of this. And it might just be because of that. But listen to this man of God. What God is going to begin to do for you is, is he's going to start to bless you in unusual places. That He's going to start to touch your life in places that you never thought that he was going to touch you. And this is why. Because when he gets done doing it, everybody... Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. When he gets done doing it, everything around you and everybody around you is going to say, look what the Lord has done. They, they are going to realize that there was no way, oh, there was no other way that God was going to do it if he didn't do it. If he didn't get done the way that it's going to get done this week, oh, everybody else would have thought that maybe it was because we were so smart and we're so awesome and we're so intelligent. But God is going to start to bless his people in un usual places so that way everybody around you will start to know that he is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. He is still upon the throne and what's going to happen is is what happens in you will be contagious and just like Mary and Martha when the baby, when Jesus leaped in Mary, oh 
of the baby leaped in my come on somebody hear me that what God is going to do in your life he is going to do something and it is going to be contagious for the people around you the anointing that you have is going to be distributed the anointing that he gives you is going to transfer to those around you to set off a chain reaction of blessing Amen. I prophesy that over your life today be blessed I love you I God, he's such a good God. He's such a good God. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I hope this word has blessed your life and blessed your heart. If you have prayer requests, if God didn't already do it, he's doing something in the atmosphere right now. If he didn't already do it, keep those prayer requests coming. We're going to be praying every Saturday, me and my wife. We're praying for supernatural moves of the Holy Ghost. Not normal, but supernatural. In the name of Jesus. I want you to be blessed. I love you. And I will see you next Sunday right here at 3 p.m. God bless you.